Hello YouTube, I'm ABC, and today I'm going to be making a calculator in Minecraft. Now I haven't completely thought out how I want to do this, but um, I've been learning about this kind of stuff in school, some electronics and circuit stuff, and it, it can be related to Minecraft, and I'm pretty sure I can I can pull off making a calculator, but we'll see. I'll give you updates along the way, and it should be hopefully entertaining to watch either way. So, we're back. Uh, I decided to start by making like you know the, uh, a hard drive, I suppose. Um, so you know to keep track of the values of the user inputs. So to do that, you need latches. So that's what I, what that's what I have right here. This latch keeps track of a data value, and this is the one I learned about. This is the version I learned about. Um, apparently, there's several different ways to make a latch, and there's several different ways they can function. So I had some trouble figuring out which one, and also Minecraft's logic and designs, but here's how this one works anyway. So um, there's basically two inputs to two inputs to this latch. This this right here is the reset, and this right here is the setter. So right now it'll be off, because you see this outside ring is off, but if I were to set it to on, I could do that by activating that, and it becomes on. And see it stays on, which is the whole point of the latch. If you stop giving it the input, it, it retains its input, its memory. Um, and then the other command is reset, which has the zero again. And there we go. For my design, I wanted to make something that'll toggle, so you can just give one input. That would change the value, but that didn't quite work. I mean, um, that w it wasn't quite as simple transferring over as I had expected. So, in my uh, book, School and stuff, they I it talks about transparent latches, which is basically where you have enable and um, whatever, whatever you want to be. So enable would be whether or not you want to change the value, what, and the other one would be on if you want it to be on, off if you want it to be off. So I made this little button to enable. So this says when I want to change it, so I click whenever I want to change it. And then instead of feeding in what I want the value to be, I just have it feed in what currently is that, but in a sense, invert it. And this is my little latch, which every time I click here, it changes it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, so I was able to figure figure that out, but um, on YouTube, there's a lot of designs, not YouTube, on the internet, there's a lot of different designs, and this is another one which does exactly the same thing, just a heck of a lot smaller, my design, the other design. So, you can see this is exactly the same thing. I can click the button, it turns on, click again, turns off, and continues like that. I don't fully understand what's happening in this circuit. Minecraft has a lot of little tricks that has up its sleeve that I am not, do not fully understand, but, oh well. Because I have indicated that I can do it, I am happy using this cheat. So, yeah, this is my little experimental area over here, I think. I went ahead and started on it. No? Where did I start on it? All right, here I started on it. So these are this is my hard drive. Um, four latches for each value. So your first value, if you wanted to input five plus seven or something like that, um, eventually this these four things here represent um, the number five. Except they'll be in binary. So I guess five would be that would be the binary number for five. Uh, Zero one zero one, and then the seven would be over here, which would be that would be zero one one one. That's seven binary. So yeah, this is gonna store the values we're gonna do calculations with. All right, next I think I'm going to. Oh, and by the way, this took like over an hour, well over an hour for me to decide on which latches I'm gonna use, and then to um. And then after that, to you know, mass produce a couple. Um, but you know, I'm learning, so that's why. All right, next thing I'm gonna make it a screen. No, no, no. Next, I'm going to uh, I think I make it like an incrementer, so that way um, the user can define their value by clicking one button and incrementing zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, rather than them like it's like you having all these buttons. So that's what I add next. Alright, here we are. 
So I've added an incrementer. So every time I hit this, it should count up in binary. So that's one. And that's two. And that's three. And that's four. And go up there. And that's five. And fifteen. And then that's all we can hold. And we get overflow and it all just turns off. Beautiful. Okay. Um now it's now at zero. Um Alright, so like I said, this is the same thing we had earlier, except I added some stuff to the top. So this button would will go down here and it'll turn it on via that path as usual, just toggle it. And then up here it'll go over to this oh geez, uh this AND gate over here. And if it's currently on, that means that we're about to turn it back off. And if we're turning it back off, that means that it's an overflow, let's say. It should go over to the next digit. So if it's currently on and we're about to add another one go down this line and then the same thing. So if it, it'll go down this line and toggle the other one and at the same time it'll feed into this AND statement and depending on whether it's currently on it'll overflow. So that's basically the same thing I have over and over again. I did have one issue where it would uh, I would turn this on and then it'll turn it on so fast that it would feed to this AND gate even though it wasn't on beforehand. So I had to add these uh, repeaters here to slow it down and make sure that it wouldn't get that the um, the button would have already turned off by the time it reaches this part. So, and I am pretty happy with how it works. That took me another hour. Um, let's see, and next, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to add a display. So there's, there's going to be multiple steps to that, but basically I want some them to see the number in front of them when they press the button, rather than having to switch through a binary. You know, make it more user-friendly. But before that, I've got to modify this one. All right, I didn't get around making this screen, but I have, um, I've added for another one and a half hours, and this is what I have, what I've got. So I converted my our my hard drive to, um, this uh, blue these blue boxes, so that way they're more understandable, and that's basically how things work in the um, real world, I suppose. You buy chips, and you think of them only in terms of what you put in, and what you get out. You don't think of what's inside it at all. So, um, I have. An input here, which will increment, and I have these outputs over here, which um, will show the number we get out of it. And just for convenience sake, I added these little things right here to show me what number is currently being stored in these hard drives. Okay, so you know I can just hit this button over here, and that will increase. And likewise, I get an output over here for that um, particular. Uh, value so I can I can you know um, use that it's not just a light that pops up I can use the the wiring to um, make it do other stuff later on in my calculator but yeah I've been at it for a while I'm going to think I'm going to take a break for now and uh, I'll be adding more later all right that was a nice break uh, time to get back to work. Uh, let's see. Um, so I want to add a screen so that people can see the number that they're adding in base 10. Um, so to do that, I'm first going to need to... The way, I'm, the way I've thought it out is I'm going to have it take these values, decode it over to base 10, or give me at least an enumerate, I guess, the co possible combinations. And then for each possibility, I'll output the... Um, uh, associated value of a seven digit um, screen. For, for my class we have an example about se um, having a decoder on a seven digit screen so that works out nicely. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah right here. So I'm going to output it onto a seven digit, I think what's the term? Se seven segment coder. All right. Yeah so I'm going to First, decode, decode it to all its possibilities, enumerate the possibilities with the decoder, as it were, as you will, and then I'm going to um, then convert it over to a seven-segment display as here. All right, uh, enumerating all the combinations of four inputs is a little bit trickier than I expected. I think that'll be it for the day. I'll I'll get this figured out tomorrow.